So in this video, we're going to talk about what combining like terms is. Basically, what is a like term and how do you combine them into a single term? So like terms have the same variables in the exact same combinations. And when I say same combinations, I mean they use the same powers. So let's look at a couple of examples of things that are like and things that are not like. So 3x and negative 2x are considered like terms because they have the exact same variables. They're x's and they're all x's to the first power. So these are like terms and therefore I can add or subtract them and combine them into a single term. Compared to say a 4x and a 7, those are not like terms because 7 does not have a variable and so I can't combine them into a single term. If I add them together they just stay 4x and plus a 7. Okay. And so same thing with 3x squared and 14x. These are not like terms. Yes, they have the same variables, but they're not in the same combination because this is an x squared and this is an x. Squares do not add together with x. So if I had a 3x squared and a 14x added together, it would stay 3x squared plus 14x. And I have to be very careful. As I said, if I said many times, it's all in the details. So you have to be super, super conscientious and just not say, oh wait, hey, these things both have x and y and they can be combined because they can't because this has an x squared and this has a, like, uh, has a y squared and these are not like terms and they cannot be combined. But if I put the square on the same thing, like 4x squared y and 5x squared y, then yes, these two terms can totally be combined into a single term of x squared y. And the way I do that is by adding the coefficients. This number here, the coefficient, tells me how many x squared y's I have. So I have 4x squared y's here and 5x squared y's here. So if I added them together, I would get a total of 9x squared y. And doing that combination or turning them into a single term is called combining like terms. It's not a property in itself because uh, it's not an axiom. Um, because I can prove it. It's actually a combination of several things put together into just, just this one step. Um, okay, so let's do some real examples. All right, And this is the time where you want to pause and see if you can do this on your own. If you think you understand the concept, then ah, try it on your own. Ariane Marrero, please come to the front. Ariane Marrero, please come to the front. Okay, those of you who stay after school know that I am still at school and it is like after school because that's what happens when you're after school. They make calls to everybody. All right, so if I have 3x plus 4x plus 5, um, pause it and see if you can combine the like terms on your own and see if you can get the same answer I get. All right, so I can only combine the things that are like. 3x and 4x are like, so I add the coefficients. I have 3x's and 4x's, which means I get a total of 7x's 5 can't be combined with it, so I get a 7x plus a 5. And that's my answer. All right, now that's not typical. That's a super basic level example because typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a whole bunch of different kinds of terms. You have to find the like ones, and I'm going to mix them all up. So you have to use the commutative property to rearrange things in such an order that the like terms are next to each other. So if I look at here, I have three kinds of terms. I have the x terms, the y terms, and the constant terms. And constant terms don't have variables. And so what I want is I want to put the 8x with the x. And so I use the commutative property, and I, whoopsie, and I put them together so they're right next to each other. And then I put the other terms towards the end um, because I need variable terms in the front, and I like x's. So now this x here, the one that I accidentally wrote wrong, um, does have a coefficient. And remember the coefficient is 1. So if I follow the procedure of adding the coefficients, 8x plus 1x gives me 9x. Now that 4y can't combine with anything, and that 9 can't combine with anything either. And so then this is my simplified example, or simplified answer. So let's look at another example. And this one is another one that you want to try on your own. So pause it after I write the example and try it. So this one, uh, 5x squared plus 2x plus 4x squared plus 3x. OK, so pause here and try it. Now, um, when I want to simplify this, I need to put the like terms together. So 5x squared and 4x squared are like terms. They're both squares, and they're both squares of x, so they can be combined. So I'm going to put them together. And then 2x and 3x can be combined, so I'm going to put those together at the end. 
Now the reason why I put them at the end is because remember when we simplify we want things with higher exponents in the beginning and lower exponents at the end. Since squares are higher than first powers then the 5x squared and the 4x squared go together. In essence what I did property wise was I used a commutative property and swapped those two terms. So then 5x squareds and 4x squareds combine to 9x squareds and 2x's and 3x's combine to give me 5x. Box it off, happy face. Now you may have noticed that every example I've given so far has had positive terms only. That's because the only thing you can commute is uh, addition. So um, that's the one thing you have to be super careful with and that's the one thing people mess up with uh, most often. Um, is thinking that you can just rearrange these terms and you can't because you cannot commute subtraction. Now luckily for us we have a definition that we can use that makes this um, in such a way that I can uh, move things around. And if you notice what I did was I changed those subtractions into adding a negative and that is the definition of that subtraction. Remember subtracting is adding the opposite so if I can't commute subtraction then I'm going to go ahead and use the definition and convert that to an addition problem and then commute. Now notice it's like that minus sign became a little negative sign in front of the x so now when I commute things which I can because everything's addition I'm going to move that x to the front and I'm going to move that 7 to the back because x needs to be in the front but it's not an x it's a negative x and that's not a 5 that's a negative 5. So then when I combine the like terms, negative x stays where it is, 7 plus negative 5 is just 2. And I can simplify that. All right, so this next e example is one you want to try on your own. Um, so pause now. Well, not pause now. Wait till after I write the problem down. Then pause, because that would be silly. All right, so I have 13x minus 4 minus 5x plus 7. OK, so pause now. All right. Now, if I want to simplify this, I have to rearrange the terms. I really want this 4 back here and the 5 up there with the 13x. But it's subtraction, so I can't commute subtraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this problem so that it has addition using my definition of subtraction. And now I can swap those two terms. I can put the 13x along with that negative 5x, because remember the sign goes with it. That was the whole point of adding the negative. And then um, move the negative 4 over here and add a 7. And so then I can combine these guys. 13x plus negative 5x is 8x. And negative 4 plus 7 is 3. So this thing simplified is 8x plus 3. That's combining like terms. Now remember, whenever you have a subtraction, you have to change it to adding the opposite so that you can rearrange things in such a way that the like terms are together.